Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing kingdom realities. In Apostle Joshua Selman's enlightening message, Accessing the Power of Light, we discover how light transforms our lives. The Word of God illuminates our path, dispelling darkness. Embrace the light of Christ, which empowers and guides us. With divine light, obstacles are overcome and freedom is achieved. Worship magnifies the light within, drawing us closer to God's presence. Access the power of light and walk in divine illumination. In John chapter 3 and verse 16, the Bible tells us that for God so loved the world, he gave his only then begotten son that whosoever, I've taught you that this blessing is for whosoever, believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Verse 17 says, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Are we together? Romans 10, 9 and 10. The Bible says that if you believe with your heart that God raised him from the dead, and confessing with your mouth the lordship of jesus you shall be saved the general rule is in verse 10 that with the heart the heart is the instrument of believing unto righteousness and that with the mouth confession is made unto salvation are we together in first john chapter 5 reading from 11 and 12 i'm showing you that the starting point of any believer's desire to experience liberty and freedom that is in Christ is start with salvation. If for any reason you follow the path that you propose or is proposed to you to bring you liberty and you bypass salvation, you've already gotten it wrong. Are we together? Yeah. You can encounter a miracle service, you can encounter a deliverance service, you can encounter a healing meeting, whatever it is, any route you follow is simply an inferior route. God's route, God's system of administering liberty to the saints, bringing the saints to the experience of the God life, of liberty, of power, is that number one, they experience salvation or being born again. First John chapter 5, 11 and 12 and this is the record that God hath given unto us eternal life say eternal life and that this life is in his son read verse 12 with me if you can see it ready one to read he that hath the son uh -huh, hath life and he that hath not the son of God hath not life it's as simple as that say salvation, salvation. one more time say salvation the new birth experience is the starting point. Now listen carefully. The new birth experience I wrote here, you may want to write now. The new birth experience is not the totality of the believer's experience, but the starting point of the journey to liberty and victory. Let me take it again. That the new birth experience is not the totality of the believer's experience no that is not all the believer should experience it is the starting point of a journey that eventually culminates to victory and liberty in experience just not knowing this alone will keep you defeated forever even when you are saved the new birth experience in order of spiritual priority is the starting point but not the totality of the believer's experience. It is only the starting point of a journey that should lead to victory and liberty. Second point about salvation that you should know in helping you understand the dynamics of liberty I wrote here is that being saved, listen, being saved by confessing the Lordship of Jesus does not automatically bring you 
into the experience of victory. Hmm. Being saved by confessing the Lordship of Jesus, genuinely so, does not automatically bring you into the experience of victory. Many sincere believers have been victims of this. There is a narrative that the moment you get saved, automatically you begin to function in the experience of victory. It is not so. Jesus who came as a pattern man, that was not even the pattern he followed. That was not the pattern the apostles followed. If that is your understanding, something is wrong that needs to be adjusted. Being saved by confessing the Lordship of Jesus does not automatically in itself bring you into the experience of victory. Now listen carefully. Being saved or being born again gives you access not experience. Being saved gives you access not experience. It gives you access. The door is open. The new and living way is open. Now you can access it. Jesus started by saying, I am the way. Is that in your Bible? Why did he bring that description? I am the way. That way leads you to truth. And that truth administers life. It's not just I am the way. You can choose the way. Or you can choose the truth. It's still me. Or you can choose. No, it is a map he's giving you. That in learning me and in experiencing life, you don't start experiencing life by experiencing life. You start experiencing life by finding the way. If it is the right way, it will lead you to reality, truth. And there is something you do with that truth that will give you life. Did you get that? I am the way. It's a path. So the moment you find the way, you start rejoicing because the way is proof that you are already on the journey to experiencing life indeed. When he says, I am come that ye may have life, this is the dynamics. You don't have life by just having life. You have life by knowing and finding the way. If you follow the wrong way, that already corrupts your potential to experiencing life. But that when you find the way, you don't just jump into life. Between the way and the experience of life, there is something called truth. You can find the way and yet not interact with the truth. And you will find out that even though it is in prophecy, even though it is part of the package of eternal life, that you should walk in life indeed, you may never see it in your life. I am the way. If you follow that path, correctly it will lead you to truth and there is something that happens to you when you interact with that truth the end point is life so salvation grants you access access to now begin the journey that administers inexperience because you see the initial new birth experience affects your spirit man principally Please listen carefully. The part in the salvation experience that is instant and finished is your spirit man, not your mind and not your body. Are we together now? So when an individual comes to Christ and confesses his lordship, what part of him exactly receives that life? It is a spirit interaction. That is why, with all due respect, the person can be as foolish as he came to the altar and return back and still act foolishly, even though he received Jesus. Are we together now? Yeah. The person can have struggles while on stage and go back and you'll be surprised. Now, potentially, he has come into the way and he has received a deposit of that life in his spirit man. But he does not need it there. It needs to be lived out in the physical realm. And that there is a protocol, there is a rule of engagement that translates the reality of that life such that tomorrow you can see the one saved person and know that this person has become a child of God. The effulgence of eternal life has spilled over from his spirit man. Now his body, his life, his condition becomes a testament that he has met Jesus. If there was nothing more to initial salvation, there would be no need for pastors because there are people who met God on their own. There would be no need for churches. 
there would be no need for empowerment programs are we together now there would be no need for the fivefold ministry in fact there would be no need for the Holy Spirit after you are saved why did God so design it that it is even after you are saved you receive the Holy Spirit it means it is a journey and that that journey you cannot go on your own that is the reason why the moment you are saved the Holy Spirit comes to help you and begins that journey and God plants you under a teaching ministry that now begins to build you he says this is life eternal John 17 3 that they may know not just that they may receive that they may know thee the only true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent if you're with me say amen. amen so we're discussing the ministry of light and under this we're looking at the dynamics of liberty and I said number one liberty starts with having this encounter with Jesus God's intent for the believer was not just salvation from sin and Satan please listen to this God's intent for the believer was not just salvation from sin and Satan, but an opportunity to live in victory while serving his purposes. That means when the believer becomes saved, that is not all God's goal for him. It is the starting point. Are we together? God's goal for the believer or intent for the believer was not just salvation from sin and Satan, but that after salvation from sin and Satan, that believer comes into a point of victory living and enjoying victory that comes with the divine life while serving the purposes of the kingdom first timothy chapter 2 3 and 4 first timothy chapter 2 verse 3 and 4 here's what the bible says in fact let's start from verse 1 to put it in context I exhort therefore, he says, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, verse 2, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and a peaceable life in all godliness and honesty, verse 3, for this is good, what is good, that art of praying for those in authority is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, now digresses and gives you a more information about that God that God will have all men to be what uh-huh and to come on to the knowledge of the truth you see that now God's desire is number one to have all men saved but it does not just leave them there that when they are now saved the starting point of the journey then they come on to the knowledge of the truth why because it is in knowing the truth that you are free free indeed salvation the experience of the new birth it is not the total experience that the believer needs it is the initial experience that brings you into the kingdom that means if you are not saved there is no access for you to enjoy other benefits in the kingdom are you seeing why salvation is important you cannot bypass salvation and use miracles to get life you will not because everybody jesus saved before he died are we together everybody that jesus healed before he died was not saved they still died everybody that Jesus delivered before he died there was no possibility of receiving eternal life before Jesus died but there was a possibility of healing multiplying bread every miracle you seek to happen in your life already happened to men before they received Jesus so if you just use miracles and signs and wonders as a replacement for salvation that is already a mistake that when you want people to become a manifestation of God's glory, look up please, you will have to give them more than a healing. You will have to give them more than deliverance from demon spirits. Because even if you cast out those demon spirits and they are not saved, the demon spirits have a legitimate access to still return to that body. Legitimate. Are we together? If you prophesy over people and they get jobs that is wonderful but those jobs they are still under the influence of the systems and the structures of life they've not been elevated by the blessings that come with salvation salvation is very important every believer intending 
to be like God in experience and to experience the liberty that is in Christ, the first part of call. That means, listen, look at me. Every time you see someone sick, think salvation first before healing. You get the point? Yes. Every time you see someone depressed, if someone comes to talk to you and say, I don't like the way my life is, just look at them. You may counsel the person, but I'm saying, God in God's mind, if you want that person to experience lasting liberty, the most important discussion, regardless what state, is the salvation of that person. If that person could not be healed by your hand and you get that person saved, you have put him on the way. He has come closer to experiencing the truth that will bring him life. Are we together? Now, there are many people who sometimes, they have people who are sick, depressed. They have people who are poor looking for help and they are not able to provide all those other helps. But they are able to lead the person to Jesus and they still live disappointed. They say, but this person was looking for rent. I couldn't give him rent, but I preached to him about Jesus and he got genuinely saved. Let me tell you, you have done something noble in the kingdom because you have brought that person closer to solving that rent problem forever. Because with the way will come access to the truth. You see that now? And if it is truth indeed, eventually he will experience life and life in all its ramification, which includes being prosperous. Let's go to the next point. Dynamics of liberty. So number one is salvation. But I told you that salvation by confessing the Lordship of Jesus does not automatically bring you into the experience of victory. Please listen to that. It is rather concerned with giving you access. The second aspect of walking in the experience of liberty is called knowing the truth. Hmm. Knowing the truth. Knowing the truth, my God. That means in addition to receiving life from the Savior, you need to know the truth. You have met the Savior, but you need to know the truth that he brings. If you do not know the truth that came with the Savior, you will remain defeated even though you genuinely met the Savior. What is knowing the truth? It describes the whole process from accessing light to being transformed by it. When the Bible talks about knowing the truth, it's a holistic capture of the entire process from accessing light after you are saved to being transformed by it. Ye shall know the truth and the truth that you know shall set you free. The word know there is beyond just awareness. He's not just saying you will be aware of an information that is correct. That is, no, 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 no. No. You can be aware of an information and it profits you nothing. So when the Bible talks of knowing the truth, it's a deeper statement than English just gives to us. The idea to the layman is being aware of an information. No. Knowing the truth is a, is a journey on its own. A journey from accessing that light, that truth, until you become transformed by it. Knowing the truth requires three steps. Let me give them to you. Knowing the truth based on the Bible's idea requires three steps. Number one, access to the truth knowing the truth requires number one access to the truth the first way you begin your journey to knowing the truth is to even have access to it access to the word access to the holy spirit access to the ministry of the teaching priest you see that these are the three ways by which God communicates truth to us. Number one, his word. Number two, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Number three, the ministry of the teaching priest. If you ignore the ministry of the word, if you ignore the ministry of the Holy Spirit, and if you ignore the ministry of the teaching priest, there is no opportunity for you to access truth again. You will find out that you will be saved, but you will never come into the victory that is in Christ. Let me remind you again, if you are in pursuit of truth, these are the three areas to look at. Number one, the word of God. 
sanctify them by thy truth thy word is truth are we together the entrance of thy word giveth light and understanding unto the simple number two the holy spirit he's called the spirit of truth when he the spirit of truth is come he shall guide you into all truth that is john 16 from verse 13 he shall guide you he's called the spirit of truth that means his advocacy is that of truth you can trust his ministry the spirit of truth and then number three the teaching priest Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15 and I will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart and if they are pastors or shepherds indeed they will feed you with knowledge and understanding the utopian Enoch was reading and he did not understand and God brought Philip to him and he said please tell me who is this man talking about himself or another and he began to expantiate and expound the truth for him and it was on account of the ministry of the teaching priest that he got saved on his chariot and highlighted when he saw a pool and said there is water here nothing stops me from being baptized and as soon as he was baptized the spirit of God took Philip truth there are many believers who want to grow but they do not know where to search for growth the Word of God the ministry of the Holy Spirit and the ministry of the teaching priest let me tell you the truth when God really wants to help you he grants you access to a man of God that he has given the grace for light woe betides a believer who does not have the privilege of sitting under the mentorship of a teaching priest I tell you your Christian journey will be a circle of pain pain that will make you distrust God you will wonder and say is this what I'm reading in the Bible is it real you see most of us men of God do not understand the reason why the Bible says we will be judged because the privilege of priesthood is God giving you access literally access to the destinies of men you are walking representing God to mold and make or break and destroy the destinies of men and that comes by the quality or otherwise of the spiritual information that is given to them what you are learning from here week in week out that is what is shaping your understanding onto a life of victory or onto a life of defeat are you seeing that now it is a risk to submit yourself, submit your mind, submit your understanding. And then for families that are here, you imagine a man and his wife and the three children. These are the three boys that represent the future of that family. And all of them come to sit under a man of God. It is not only the man's destiny that is at a risk. His future is at a risk because what he's learning is also what the children will learn. So if it is error, that entire generation has been destroyed. It is the reason why God will judge teachers. He will say, where did you get this one that you are teaching? You got this one because you are hungry and you went to the extent of deceiving people. You got the money, but you destroyed destinies. The prophet that should emerge did not emerge. You hid the truth. You were afraid of being criticized and you did not say this. You didn't say that. Hallelujah. You see the reason why the work of priesthood is not a vocation. It's not something you look at just when you are hungry and you say, well, I applied for civil defense. My name didn't come out. I applied for um, immigration. My name didn't come out. Well, I, there's at least I hear that pastors get money, free money from people. Let me try ministry and see. That corrupted motif alone if God brings people to you, you would destroy their destiny. And because Africa is a very religious continent, you see that now? When you go to school, there is a date for graduation and you leave that school. But when you are under a spiritual structure, you are usually there for the rest of your life. Are we together now? Yes. If you receive error for any reason in school, it can be corrected. At least you've stopped going there. But once you are on, there are people who are in church, they started coming to church when they are 10 years. Now they are 50, 60 years. Your destiny will be at the mercy of the correctness or otherwise of the truth you have received. And I want you to pay attention to what I want to share with you now. Access to the truth. 
starts by access to the word access to the ministry of the Holy Spirit and access to a teaching priest a teaching priest doesn't matter what form or fashion it comes a teaching priest what makes a teaching priest a teaching priest is beyond a good heart you can be a sincere man of God but not be a teaching priest if you are not a teaching priest don't teach do what is within the jurisdiction of your grace are we together now to teach means to bring people into a comprehension of a truth and there is a grace for that it is not just something you decide a teaching priest is more than brain work is the product of the spirit of revelation granting you access to doctrine granting you access to principles and the ways of God in an unusual way for the sake of the people sent to you so the excellency of the preaching uh, teaching priest is beyond his study life is beyond his level of intelligence all those things are enhancers the grace for the teaching ministry is an endowment from God if you don't have it no matter how you do it will be clear that this grace is not on you you would destroy people let me tell you the truth if you have the grace of a teaching priest God can walk through your limitations even linguistic limitations and you will see that even though you may not be as articulate but because of the spirit that flows through your words the people will understand what you intended to say and it will not deceive them that is the difference between oratory and utterance when God grants you utterance to speak his counsel both the learned and unlearned will eventually understand you they can pick the spirit communications from what you are saying and even though you are limited I'm not saying you should not train yourself when you have utterance and oratory it's a beautiful combo that helps you to articulate truth with clarity and precision but that even if you are limited physically when the spirit of revelation is upon you and God has given you the mandate of a teaching priest you will be surprised that no matter how simple or complicated you are the spirit of God can move through your frailty and insist that the people understand you are we learning access to truth the second layer to knowing the truth is to hear and receive the truth you can have access ladies and gentlemen but not hear and receive I'll give you an example of those who had that the scribes and the Pharisees had access to truth their issue was never access they were in almost all of Jesus's crusades but they did not hear and they did not receive while Jesus was preaching they were just looking for where to get trouble where to pin him down one time they met Jesus sitting, maybe preparing, meditating, preparing, and they brought up all kinds of issues. Issues of the, uh, you know, the woman who was caught in adultery, the woman who was, um, 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 you know, um, the, the gentleman who was about to be healed that he said, your sins are forgiven. Ah, that became, he said, who are you to forgive sins? And they brought up another issue and they would never listen to the truth. It was Nicodemus, one among them, that listened carefully and said, no, this what this man is saying and he smuggled himself and came to him by night John 3 rabbi we know that thou art a teacher sent from God for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him and that discussion is what led to John chapter 3 down to 16 17 many people have access to light but many people are not intentional about hearing and receiving do you know people come to church like this and you will be surprised the many things that happen while the word is coming destiny defining truths light from heaven through his vessel God comes to men through men he saw the captivity of Israel and he said I am come down and that happened through the man Moses so God ministers to men through men I have commanded a widow to feed you but when Elijah met the widow, he said, I can't remember any command. When was she commanded? When the prophet said, go and make me this. That was God speaking to her through him. God speaks to men through men, primarily. So people get distracted, for instance, in church. While this is happening, another person is thinking, calculating profits, typing text messages. 
doing all that they are doing and those distractions are largely demonic why do you think satan comes to church to hear what i'm saying he comes to church because you are coming to church everywhere god is satan wants to be there too because he knows that everywhere god is there is something that will lead to life and everywhere god is he gives men what he can steal he can kill he can destroy so every time satan is looking for what to steal he first looks for where god is going because every time god shows up he gives things to men and that's what satan wants to steal are we together a man can receive nothing except it is given to him so satan knows um, they're on their way to church and he comes to he doesn't have to be invited hanging around the corridors of where the saints are and he's waiting quietly and the moment a word is coming that is explaining why your life your family your ministry is where it is he distracts you using all kinds of things from slumber to carelessness to whatever it is and you find out that your word just slipped may your mind be at alert to receive that which is yours in the name of jesus you want to be transformed by the light of god to experience liberty you access the truth that means you must come within the proximity of where the truth is listen how many of you know that if you see let's say for instance our father in the lord that the jew you hear that he's holding a crusade somewhere how many of you know that if you are trusting god for healing by coming close to the crusade ground your chances for that healing is already increased is that true the man that they tore the roof and brought him down do you think that man would have been healed at home like that most likely not even the one who was healed at home there was someone who came near jesus to plead for him proximity to where god is walking is proof that you will encounter that god did you hear what i said this is why it is important for believers to not miss the gathering of the saints proximity proximity have you been touched by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to jesus or you want to rededicate your life to jesus christ as your lord and savior then say this short prayer lord i admit i am a sinner i need and want your forgiveness i accept your death as the penalty for my sin and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love not based on anything i have done cleanse me and make me your child be faithy receive you into my heart as the son of god and as savior and lord of my life from now on help me live for you with you in control dot in your precious name amen congratulations to you if you have just said that prayer you are now a child of god look around you for a bible believing church and also ask jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve him consider subscribing to this channel too so that you'll keep learning the realities of god's kingdom god bless you